Alright guys, anyways, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to teach you guys how to hack Wi-Fi. So, anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the thing to launch the disk. It shouldn't take too long to load it up. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be teaching you guys how to hack Wi-Fi and never have to pay for internet again. So anyways, what I'm going to be doing is you go to BT3 VESA KDE mode, graphics mode. That's the best mode that it, to use for Backtrack 3. Linux. Anyways, it's booting up. So, uh... Shouldn't take long. It'll load up a console. And then, uh... Yeah, there we go, it's loading up the drivers. Anyways, it's remote exploit program. Anyways, time to do one up. Get ripped here. Before this thing loads all the way up. Loading up. Uh, that's the KDE. This is what I'm going to be using to hack uh, Wi Fi. Now, what we're doing is we're hacking WEP. Not WPA, something that's really complicated. We're going to do something that's a little bit more simple. It doesn't take too long to hack. So, anyways, basically, it's loading up all the uh, programs, loading up the basic uh, drivers. So now that everything's basically loaded up, a uh, KDE desktop environment, what you want to do is you want to go into your uh, command. So anyways, uh, the command thing is right there. That's that little black window thing at the corner. Now that I hit that, it should be loading up a window right here. So basically now what we have to do is figure out what our device is. So now we enter air mon dash ng. Now this is uh we'll figure out what our devices are. Now this will list uh your Wi-Fi devices. Anything that operates on Wi-Fi. Anything based off 802.11 authentication. So, Aramon dash NG. Now that's loading that. There we go. Now it's figured out what our thing. Now what we're going to be using our interface device is Wi-Fi 0. All in lowercase. The Theros chipset says it's an ejectable driver. Mad Wi-Fi yeah, NG is that NG. So basically this is an injector card that's capable of doing ARP injection. Now ARP is basically address resolution protocol. Now what we have to do is stop the device. So airmon dash ng space stop space now what your device is, in this case Wi-Fi zero. Enter. Now it disables that. Uh, it shows uh, what it is and that uh, does not support whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. So I F can fig and then uh, space what your device is. Y I zero. That's the device you're going to be using to hack space down. You want your device to run downstreaming. 
This set allows this uh, allows you to exploit the ability to create a Mac spoofing. This is the first step is basically spoofing your Mac by finding out your driver. Now by spoofing your Mac, Mac changer space dash dash Mac. Now this can be whatever you want it to be, anywhere from uh, number zero to nine zero to nine and then letters A to F. In this case, zero zero colon one one colon two two colon three three colon four four colon five five colon. That's the Mac that I'm going to be using my fake Mac. Now you want to take this into account for later on when you hack, basically. That's what you're spoofing. Actually, you don't really have to worry about that. Consider I'm doing a more automated method. I'm so used to the script method. Oh, shit. <coughs> want to change it. Don't want to forget a letter there, otherwise it won't do the command. Mac. Space. Zero, zero. One, one. Two, two. Three, four, 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 five. Okay, now that it's actually done all that, now we enter is what your device that you're going to change the MAC address on. In this case, our Wi-Fi Zero. So now that we got that Wi-Fi Zero, this should uh, change the MAC address. There we go. Now it'll say unknown, like uh, this is the old MAC address, what it used to be, right there. And then the new one, which is your fake Mac, which is your Simmons group address. Now that we've got that, now we want to start up the device. So, airmon dash ng space, what your device is. W, so, Wi Fi. Zero space start. This will start up your device interface. Now that your interface device is up, you can exit this window. Now, basically, what we go to is the key K icon right here up in the corner, that blue icon in your Linux. Now, once we load that up. We can load up the menus. So basically, what I do is I go to backtrack, go to uh, radio network analysis, right there, 802.11, go to analyzer. Now the program that I'm going to be using is is uh, Kismet to analyze the Wi-Fi. Now what you want to do is, uh, okay, Wi-Fi zero. Now this allows you to select what type of device you want. In this case, we're using Wi-Fi zero. We select Wi-Fi zero. Now that it's selected that, it's going to boot up Kismet. The application console should load up all the scripts and driver devices more automated level. Now it's detecting all the devices now. In this case, Bell 557, all Bell routers are run at WEP 54G. So now basically down here it'll tell you what your BSSIDs and all that are for all your uh, networks. So basically once you've scrolled down, basically you want to take account into what channel the network is on and uh, what the BSSID is. The BSSID is basically your Mac. Now basically what we're going to do is we're going to leave this window up to leave it active to allow ARP injection for address resolution protocol. <laughs> this is a, a common exploit that uh, WEP has. This is why WEP encryption is so insecure and why I recommend WPA PSK because it requires a dictionary attack and no passphrase is ever the same basically unless then you end up using like common passphrases. But anyways you go to uh, your backtrack, radio network analysis, 802.11, and you go to cracking. Now you, what you want to do is you want to use spoon web. 
So Spoon Up is that app that we're going to use to hack. So, this mouse pad's being a bit of a bitch on me here. Anyways, now that you could uh, probably see that a little bit better now, Spoon Whip. This program should load up. Doesn't take long. Now, it can take anywhere from a few seconds to t hack the Wi Fi to hours. Depends on the upstream and downstream of it. Now up here, basically, what it is, is it's going to show over a victim attack, it's MAC address, or a BSSID code. In this case, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in for Bell 557. Now remember to take into account the channel and the BSSID from before. Here we enter in the BSSID. So, uh, 3C, EA, 4F, 06. A9 and 6-1. So now that we've got that, now that's basically what it is, is that's our, our victim's MAC address. Now right here we have to choose a card. In this case, Wireless LAN 0, the card that, we're, that we have. So, in other words, uh, there's other lists of devices. Wi-Fi 0 is the one we changed the MAC address, spoofed it, and set up to use the Kismet to load the channels. Now basically what I have to do is select the channel, in this case it's channel 4. So, get that going down to channel 4. Now you want to do the ARP injection at whatever, the default 600, we're just going to leave it at that, ARP relay attack, and OK. Now basically right here it's important to check uh, for Wi-Fi 0, uh, the ATH, right here. Now that that turns red, that means that it's active. Now we can launch the attack. It's gonna just, uh, it's, what it's gonna do is it's gonna do the attack. So it can take anywhere from a few seconds to minutes to hours, even days. Right now it's attacking, gathering ARP, address resolution protocol. Now IVs are your interval packets. Now what it's doing is it's gotta capture at least a minimum of 20,000 IVs or more packets that have been injected to retrieve the key. Once it retrieves the key, it'll basically trace it. So this can take anywhere from a few minutes to, like I say, to a couple hours. In this case, it's actually going pretty fast, actually way faster than I expected. Soon we'll have this key. It just takes a couple minutes. Anyways, time to Do another one. Anyways, this will take a couple seconds. Gotta check up on this in a second. Now, what it's doing is it's capturing the packets still. It's still trying to load. Begin cracking by now, like now that's received 20,000 packets. It can take anywhere from that to as many packets as it takes, depending on how much the network's in use. Get another one in here before it starts catching. Shouldn't be long. Getting around 30,000 packets. Anyways, the, if it's anywhere less than 50,000 packets to crack it, that means that the router is incredibly weak. <laughs> and, uh... Shouldn't be long. Hopefully it'll capture something. It could take a long time to inject packets. 
and get a solid uh, key. This is taking a long while, but it'll get there. So, let's capture it. It's probably trying. Oh, there we go. Look at this. So, basically, what it's done is it's given us our web key. And uh, that's the key that we're going to use to enter in for our internet connection. So now that we've got that, go into exit that Kismet program, and we can see if we uh, if we can catch Wi-Fi on this. So uh, go to internet, and what you want to do is uh, you want to go to uh, wireless assistant. That should load up. Now refresh. Options. Anyways, it's uh. Trying to get this, uh, try and see if the land manager pops up. So, anyways, we, we've got our key, that's the important part. It's not telling me what to use for it to start it up. So anyways, uh, but if you go on the other uh, computer, basically it'll tell you, uh, I've got that web key loaded. This computer's got the network and everything. And basically what I've done is, uh, I've already connected to it. Anyways, Bell 557. Right click. Status. Uh, fifth, uh, 11 megs a second. And uh, on the details, wireless properties, if you go up here to security. It'll say wet, and if we go to show characters, now that we've entered it in and we've passed in, we've got full access to that, that web key has been entered, and that allows access to the net. And there we go. Free internet, and never have to pay again.